Good evening in our news bulletin for this evening. The quarry is unable to keep up with the aggregate supply and demand due to the breakdown of some machinery. The new Accommodation Quality Assurance Program sets standards for tourism accommodation on the island. The Fijian community wrap up fundraising efforts and managed to raise over $25,000 for the Cyclone Winston Fiji appeal. The sport team have returned to provide veterinary services to improve animal health Niue. Broken machinery at the quarry has resulted in a shortage of aggregate materials needed for roadworks and other development projects. The condition on some parts of the main roads around the island are in need for repair. The civil division who has the responsibility to process the aggregates at the quarry site said the constant breakdowns of heavy machinery contributed to the low volume of the raw aggregate materials needed to keep up with the roadworks. These aging heavy machinery have, been, have seen better working days at the rock face at the quarry. is also an ongoing concern. They have passed their use by date and the department is working on replacing them. The new crushing plant for the quarry is currently under construction in New Zealand and is due in Niue on the August boat. This new plant will process different size aggregate required not only for road maintenance but also for building and project renovations. The Director General of the Transport and Utilities, Andres Johanne, explained that the current administration had prioritised the status of Niue's main road and is collaborating closely with China for a rehabilitation project with a proposal of approximately $30 million, which would start in the middle or late this year. In the meantime, the plan is to persevere with the existing quarry and the heavy machines for now until the new ones arrive. Niue Tourism has introduced the Niue Accommodation Quality Assurance Program to help raise the standards of accommodation on the island. Discussions to develop a set of standards started more than two years ago to design a program that encouraged and recognized good standards in facilities, hospitality and service throughout the Niue Tourism industry. The assessment criteria has been developed from a number of sources and existing programs operating elsewhere in the region. In terms of um, complying with various regional and also New Zealand accreditation, accrediting program, this is quite similar to something like Qualmark, which New Zealand has, um, and also the SPTO accreditation program. So it's, we've taken some of the best bits out of those um, accrediting programs and try to make one that fits uh, specifically for us here in Niue. Um, when we had the accreditor come in, to Niue to accredit our own officer. So um, they already understand what people are looking for, what customers want um, in, the, in the standard of um, the various categories of accommodations that we have here in Niue. So a lot of them um, are balanced towards some of those um, programs um, and also making sure that it... it it's aligned to our market segment in which we are targeting um, for Niue in general. The accreditation program is to uphold um, standards within their facilities to provide for guests, uh, visiting guests, and um, the various categories aren't all the same. So we have the categories of the resort, self-catering um, is one of them, uh, guest houses, holiday homes, and economy backpackers. Um, type of um, categories. So each of them have various um, standards that are being accredited by, and our accreditation officer tries to do all the accreditation, all the accrediting before our high season starts in May. New Air Tourism has one accreditation officer responsible for inspecting each of the accommodation providers' properties, working within guidelines set out by the Quality Assurance Program. In March this year, 15 accommodation providers were amongst the first to be awarded their certificates of accreditation that acknowledge their commitment and investment into improving the standards of their properties. 
we want to encourage a lot of the accommodation providers out there um, that if they do want to sign up to the program to feel uh, free to do so. Um, we also provide a service of how we can help to promote your accommodation um, and also to see which market segment you are attracting or what kind of people will come to your um, accommodations. That We have a, a, a handbook that we give to all the accommodation providers. They then have a look at um, what we need as um, to be accredited under that program. So if, for example, you are a self-contained unit, um, under the, that accreditation booklet that we provide for the accommodators, there are certain things that you need to have within your accommodation in order for you to be accredited. The Quality Assurance Program sets out specific minimum requirements to ensure that customers get value for their money. It is designed to be reviewed on a regular basis so that over time the required standards will rise. The Fijian community in Niue have been overwhelmed with the support and the amount raised towards the Cyclone Winston Fiji appeal. Following the devastation of Cyclone Winston in February, the Fijian community on the island banded together to devise a plan to raise funds to send back to Fiji and set a deadline for all funds to be collected by the end of March. As the committee tally up the final amount and prepare to present these funds to government this week, they're thankful for the generosity that has been displayed. We spoke to the Fijian community president, Rambuka Randroli, earlier today. Uh, as a community, uh, it was really overwhelming to see the amount of support. And uh, we're really touched by the, all those uh, kind donations and, uh, and uh, positive responses towards the, the cost of uh, just helping those that have been affected by the cyclone uh, Winston. Eh? And um, as a community too, we, we have also reached uh, towards uh, in our initial uh, interview that uh, we really thank the government for giving us the okay to go forward with this fundraising. Eh? And uh, the, from that Towards, uh, towards now, it's uh, really been a willing support. Uh, even the amount that they've been raised, and also the that kind and generous donations by other other major organisations. Eh? Uh, first and foremost, the the Alofi Village Council for giving us the venue to conduct the the bingo, eh? bingo fundraising, and also the New York Golf Club for providing the venue for the dance. Just a big win for Himaki. To all those uh, families, uh, the Ekalasia, uh, the, the the Catholic uh, uh, church and uh, the other village councils that uh, have been uh, kindly donated towards this cause. At the moment, uh, we've raised uh, more than 20 grand towards the cost. And uh, this uh, will be put forward to government in the, in, on this week. And uh, it will all depend on the go-ahead from there. The wide range of fundraising efforts, from coin collections to bingos, fundraising dancers and a radiothon, as well as online donations, and support from community groups. Mr. Randroli says there were also people who offered services at no cost, and that shows a great sense of community here in Niue. The main thing that we had to overcome is to come and uh, get together and uh, sit as a community to discuss uh, what is the go forward. Uh, I really thank the community for giving all those ideas, putting forward to for what are the different uh, fundraising activities that we can organize. Eh? The amount that we have raised so far will not only help only one island, but can help uh, the whole population of Fiji, those who have been affected. And um, I think uh, every donation that has been uh, given will be acknowledged uh, uh, properly as we go ahead. Eh? The government will decide by the end of this week whether they will be able to give any additional funds. 
Veterinarians from the South Pacific Animal Welfare have been visiting Niue for the past three years to assist with animal health issues on the island. The SPORE program started in 2013, where a majority of the health issues for pets or animals in general were injuries from fights, parasites and infections. We spoke to one of the veterinarians about the state of health of animals on the island. I think one of the main things we often see is fight wounds, um, particularly the boys who are roaming and trying to find the girls and they're having fights with each other, getting infections. They're more likely to be hit by cars if they're off roaming around the villages. Um, so that's one of the biggest things that we see here every time we come. And again, that's where G-sexing, particularly the boys, is really a help. Um, other things, parasites, so getting your worm tablets in, and um, we're really lucky with Brian and Teresa up at Namakulu, um, who, you know, they do keep those over the years, so getting the parasite control and the fleas, the worms, because they can cause some pretty major major health problems, particularly in puppies. Certainly we're really here for the welfare, and we all love animals to pieces, just like we've really noticed the people on the island do. So we can help you in the, in the de-sex thing, which we've already talked about. Um, any questions or anything you're interested in, we're more than happy for you to come down, ask us some questions, watch what we do. Um, really getting those good worm and flea treatment programs in place make a big difference. Um, and I think just really being here to to help and, and do whatever you guys feel is helpful. Certainly Brian's also been able to help out with some of the, the piggeries and help on the, the production side of things as well, which is of benefit to, to everyone. The sport team says that their ideal goal is to reach 80% success rate on nurturing dogs and cats to minimise the population. However, with the reduction of population numbers, this could also affect the potential breeding of such animals. I think that's actually something I asked myself when I said to Brian, who's sort of our head vet, what, what happens if we need to too many? And basically that's not possible. So um, at 80% or so, which would be, I mean, it's, I guess that's a, an aim, but it would be actually quite hard to get 80% done. You've still got more than enough breeding stock left and you're still, every, every bitch can have, say, six or seven puppies and then they can breed. So very quickly your population um, expands and expands and expands and um I mean, I asked that myself, and apparently, no, it actually wouldn't be possible for us to run out of puppies or, or reach that point at all um, on the island. So there's nothing to worry about there. According to veterinarian Foster, there are spore teams all over the Pacific treating animals. Unlike other Pacific islands, Niue does not face any severe health issues with our animals. The spore team will be returning to Niue in October and continue to encourage pet owners and the community to ensure the welfare of their animals by getting them checked regularly. And those are our news stories that we have for you this evening. Do join us again for our next news bulletin on Thursday.